So, when I started working in a programming environment, I noticed that communication is quite a bit different than in medicine. So medicine is a high stress, fast paced, short on time environment. A young doctor often deals with half a dozen to two dozen patients at the same time, while a more experienced doctor often deals with several young doctors at the same time. It is not unusual for an experienced doctor to get a call every five minutes. Problems in the hospital go on 24 seven and don't stop at the end of a shift. Problems are being solved between different specialties. A radiologist who is dealing with a lot of other specialties is getting dozens of calls a day. What does that mean? At each of these links, information has to be transferred between people. This transfer of inf information has to be efficient and to the point. Usually it is a patient's problem that has to be solved. For this, a patient's history has to be presented and the problem stated. And it has to happen fast, complete and sometimes in the middle of the night, 30 seconds after waking up. How is that being done? I can't just call another doctor and ask for some medical information, some tidbit. I can't say, say, how do you treat this some pain in the knee? The other doctor will usually get very confused and say, why are you asking that? What does your patient have? Because in medicine, like in every problem. Hey, quick question. Um, can you help me? I need to go to know if I have to go left or straight. What do you mean by that? Where are you? Why do you ask me that? Well, I'm on a street and I can go left or I can go straight. Should I go left or straight? I'm in an electric right, right? right? I can't. I need more context. No, I'm in a car and I need to go left or, or, or straight. Wait, what? That's, uh, that's whole context. What car? Is that my car? I can't help you with this. Get out of my car. As I was saying, in medicine, just like in every problem, context matters. And it matters a lot. Med students are drilled to do that correctly. There are a lot of books written on that subject matter. At their final exam, a med student takes a whole day is mostly dedicated to getting a patient's history, symptoms and examinations just right, presenting it correctly to a superior. How is that being done? In the 1950s, Dr. Lawrence Weed was asking himself the same question when doing rounds with students at Yale University. He invented the SOAP technique and would later develop PROMISE, the problem-oriented medical information system, which was the first electronic health record. And to my surprise, in the beginning of the 70s, it had a touchscreen. What is this SOAP technique? SOAP stands for Subjective, Objective, Assessment and Plan. Subjective consists of the chief complaint of a patient, the reason why the patient is here, usually in the patient's own words. It consists of the history of, of the present illness, for example, when did it start, how did it change, what is the pain like, and of course, the medical history, history of the patient. The objective component consists of vital signs, finding from physical examinations, lab tests, imaging, and so on. Then comes the assessment, a quick summary of the patient with main symptoms, a diagnosis and a list of possible alternative diagnoses, starting with most likely to less likely. This is often merged with P, which stands for plan. What is the doctor going to do to treat the patient's problems? That's the SOAP technique. In reality, there's more to presenting a patient to another doctor. Usually, when asking a question, you state the question up front so the other person knows what to listen for. So, you don't state a long detailed patient's history and then ask, do we need to do surgery? You say, I suspect Mr. Peterson has a ruptured kidney. Do we need to take the kidney out? And then you present the case. So the expert knows what information is relevant and what isn't. Also, when asking a question, you should know or at least have an idea of what information the other person needs to solve your problem. Not all context is equal. This is a hub. Hey, so I took your su suggestion and I changed the car. So um, can you now tell me if I sh should go straight or left? Where are you? Is it still left? Where are you? 
No, it's a red car. Yeah, so straight or left? I don't know what you're talking about. I can't help you. As I was saying, not all context is equal. While for some, the information, I'm sitting in a red car, might be enough. For most, it won't be. A radiologist needs different information for making a decision than an oncologist or an orthopedic surgeon. As a question maker, an answer seeker, you should think about that. You should tailor the emphasis of your information on the decision process of your expert. Otherwise, both will be frustrated. This is a hard problem. It takes a lot of experience to get that right. After all, the knowledge what information is needed to solve a problem is half the solution. So in summary, to solve a problem, one has to present the original problem, the analysis, the assessment, and sometimes a suggestion for a solution. Why is that hard? What is the XY problem? If you ever posted a bad question on Stack Overflow, you have probably been beaten to death with it. While this is an older concept, the original naming came from a post from Eric S. Raymond called How to Ask Questions the Smart Way. The XY problem means asking about your attempt at a solution instead of your problem. This usually goes like this. Hmm, I want to do X. Maybe if I do A, then B, then C, and then Y. How do I solve Y? Well, then I only need to solve Y to solve my problem. Let's ask someone how to do that. Hey, you, experienced person. I have a small problem. How do you do Y? Hmm, that's a strange question to ask. What usually happens is that the experienced person is confused because while solving Y is a valid question, it's oftentimes an unusual and confusing problem. Oftentimes they think, I've been doing this for 20 years. This has never been a problem I needed to solve. This usually needs to much waste of time and frustration on both sides until everyone figures out the question, X. For example, so this person wants to read a lot of text and wants to extract a string between two delimiters. That's a valid question. It's a bit strange, but valid. You can solve the problem, but somehow this does not smell right. There's a growing suspicion. What he really wants to do is to parse some XML. And this is not the correct way to parse some XML. So what do we do about that? Again, always include context and start with your original problem. Don't throw the other person in the middle of your problem solving. If there are any conclusions you made or solutions you have ruled out, state them. Think about what the other person needs to solve your problem. That way, problem solving in a team will be fun, will be fast and can be done in the middle of the night. Thank you very much and have a nice day.